Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. Happy Friday. It's the start of the weekend. I am your host, Kyle, and I am joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall and Michael Reed. The Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. But we are rejoined from the Washington Post, Mr. Sam Fortier himself. How are you doing on this hot, hot Friday evening? Guys, when minicamp ends... It's like that feeling you got in high school when like school's out for summer and like, obviously there's a lot going on. Like they're, they're getting fined and losing practices for next year because of contact and Terry might get done. But I'll tell you, like, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Like the summer, the summer's here. My man, I'm right there with you. I leave for vacation tomorrow for the week. I cannot wait to get down to Myrtle beach and just have some fun. But speaking of Kyle's been listening to Alice Cooper schools out for summer on loop. All week. I crazy. cannot stand Huge that. Song. Alice Cooper guy. Also, real quick, I got to say, I was in Myrtle Beach with my mom in March, and there is a, a barbecue place there. It's like attached to like a gas station, like a Sunoco or something. Okay. I'll have to connect with you about it after we're I forget the name of it. It's like Little Hogs or something. You walk in there, okay. and it's like a bunch of old Redskins regalia, and the no dude's way. got posters up. Yeah, it's it's sick. Like, oh, I was in there, and my mom was like, oh, this is what my son does. And like, we got in this like 90 minute conversation with the people. Like you got to hit that spot in Myrtle beach. I definitely yeah. will. We'll make sure to link up with that. I think Ryan Fowler from the draft network, we're going to link up down to Myrtle beach as well. Cause we're traveling at the same time, but let's not get off topic here, Sam. This episode <laughs> is titled the mini camp review. Want to be able to talk about what you saw last week at practice. And the one person that could not go by the wayside, it wasn't Jack Del Rio. It wasn't Jonathan Allen. It was Warren Sapp coaching the guys for a couple days how how was that what did you see from it i mean man whenever you get a, a hall of fame d tackle one of the best to do it at his position of all time in there to like talk to talk to the guys that's great uh and and i so that happened because assistant defensive line coach jeff scanina is like friends with him he basically hit up martin mayhew the general manager who played with sap in tampa bay and was like you should get my guy out here and, and they made it happen so uh, he came out, and I did not realize that, like, he is also an incredible quote. Uh, he was, like, he was telling us, like, yeah, like, this defensive line with uh, with John Allen and Payne and Sweat and Chase, like, they got bowling balls and butcher knives out there. And as long as those dudes work together, like, that unit is scary. But the lone wolf dies, so you got to hunt together. And, like, man, that was it was a real pleasure watching him out there, like, get after it. Oh, yeah. Hearing him speak about this offensive line really got me going. It was, it was it pumped me up. So the other news that came out today, Ron Rivera, of course, fined a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> but it wasn't for a dust up. It was because there was too much contact in OTAs. And we also lost two OTA practices. What happened? What's going on? Yeah, Mike, 100K is flying around that facility, huh? I, right. It's almost like Cadell was like, I saw what you find, my boy. Here's what you, you do it again. You're gonna <laughs> go get- my way. I'll be glad to uh, gladly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm there and I don't get any of it. So, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know what's up with that. But so basically, I think uh, a combination of things. One, you you guys, uh, people probably saw that Jeremy Reeves had that hit on Deami Brown and Ron lost his damn mind. Like, that's why is because, like, when you have excessive contact at, you know, offseason practice, like expensive like ass tackle. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, that's basically, I think what happened also there, there was some other contact, you know, I think just in drills in general. Um, so that's why you see them losing two practices and, and you see, uh, the fine. I would, I would argue that, I mean, I think Ron would strongly disagree, but I think that losing the practice is not a huge deal. Cause if you look around the league, like so many teams, the Rams, the Bengals, the saints, like on and on teams are not using these practices like for contact. Like some teams aren't even wearing helmets. I don't think the Bengals have worn helmets yet. Um, So the laws of practice, not a huge deal. I'm sure that the hundred K, you know, he probably felt that. And the reason for the fine, I want to make sure is because of like the CBA agreement, right? So the players, uh, the NFLPA, the, that represent the players, everyone in the league. During the bar- a bargaining agreement, they had to say, basically, we want to make sure that practices are not as hard on our bodies, and that is the reason why the fine is in place, right? 
Exactly. And like um, when, when the players come to the table and, and, you know, 18 game season, there's all these like macro pieces right. of play that people pay attention to. But I think these are some of the smaller things that you see come up later is like when players say, hey, we do not, you know, it's, it's the same thing with um, you're going to have that ramp up period in late July when training camp starts now. Right. Because that's new. Um, you know, from, from COVID. So when you, these are some of the smaller tweaks that you see to that CBA. Um, so I was scrolling through Twitter recently and I came across Jeremy Fowler, what a tweet that he put out. And I guess he was either in Ashburn or talked to someone in Ashburn and they talked about how they, the, the talks with Terry intensified and they definitely want to get something done before training camp. What is the latest on the Terry news so far? Yeah, so it is June 17th, 4.30 p.m. I feel like I got to timestamp that because things can change super quick, right? But, like, um, yeah, Ron Rivera said they, they've been talking more and more with uh, Terry's agent, Buddy Baker, um, the last seven, eight days. Uh, our understanding is, uh, and my colleague Nikki Javala has done a great job with this, is, is our understanding is they're still pretty far apart. But I think that that was the conversation around John Allen until the eve of training camp, right? So it could change super fast. Um, they could also ride it out in, until training camp. And I asked Ron, like, you know, there are a lot of similarities between this deal, the Logan deal, and the John Allen deal. Like, is this reflective of a pattern, of a philosophy in that front office? And he said, he basically said, yeah, like, we we have to make sure that we are getting the best deal for us because, like, every dollar counts against the cap. I, I think that you could argue uh, that – this team shouldn't quibble over a million or two with Terry McLaurin when you're talking about needed reps with Carson Wentz and the amount that's at stake for not only this offense, but this team going into the year. Um, but if you want to be prudent and, and take it all the way down to the wire, even if it may get personal, um, then, you know, that is, that's obviously an organizational decision. So our understanding is still far apart, but, but yeah, they have been talking. Now, Sam, Based on minicamp, what is a player that stood out to you the most? And maybe if there's not a player that stood out to you, maybe like a position of play or anything like that, what stood out to you the most from minicamp? Yeah, so this, like, there are a lot of young guys I could name. I think, you know, Percy Butler, Jahan Dotson, like some of those rookies stand out. But to me, like, in early May, Ron said, we want to get a linebacker. Because after, you know, our third linebacker, we we don't have a ton of depth there. We, we need more. They didn't end up doing that. And for my money, I don't know if I saw more than a handful of plays all offseason workouts where they played more than two linebackers, even in the red zone, even inside the 10 and the five. Like it was just Cole Holcomb and Jamin Davis. Um, I'm always hesitant of reading too much into it. Right. Because like they got they got shirts and shorts and like a helmet on. But I will say that Jamin talked about a lot of, you know, how much more comfortable he felt on the outside. Cole's going to be in the middle. Um, calling out the defense, which he did last year from the outside a little bit. But um, I, I I hesitate to, like, drink the Kool-Aid on that, but I, I think they could be better. I don't think it's going to be, like, an immediate jump. But when you talk about marrying that back end and that front line and how discombobulated they were for a lot last year, I think that could, that could be a step up. And then to come off of that a little bit, Sam, Jamin Davis, I know obviously he said he he feels a lot more comfortable. Are you seeing that? And then off of that, uh, the Buffalo nickel spot, is Percy Butler, you brought him up, is he playing that? Who's Who's been playing that Buffalo nickel role with first team? Yeah, so with Jamin, it's it's really tough to say, right? Because like I thought he was doing a pretty good job at Mike last year when he was diagnosing and like getting in the hole. I, I think that you don't see the slowness until you get to like the preseason game. Right. And then you start to look back at those clips and you're like, wait a second. Like th this dude is not getting to the hole when he needs to get to the hole. But uh, in terms of Buffalo nickel, they've actually been cycling a lot of different dudes through. You've had Bobby McCain and, and Cam Curl in terms of veterans. You've had uh, Percy Butler in terms of rookies. Uh, I think they had Christian Holmes, the seventh round corner at, a, at Oklahoma state there at one point. So it really seems like it's going to be a mix and match deal until they figure out, you know, who they're like. And, and I, and I don't think that it's out of the question that they add a safety and or a veteran linebacker in training camp. Ron said he expects those guys would get up to speed pretty fast. So I think that's an option. Yeah. Right. right. And then, and then to kind of piggyback off of that one, even further, who is your, who do you predict is going to be the Washington breakout player this season? Could be anybody entering their second year or later. Hmm. Um. I think, I think Jamin is like a pretty solid candidate. I think Deami Brown could be that guy. He talked about last year, you know, when you go from catching like deep bombs for touchdowns, every other play when like he was at UNC and then you come in here and it's COVID and, you know, quarterback instability and you're not producing. 
Um, you know, he said he, he lost his confidence. He was a little bit more passive. He, he questioned his love for the game a little bit. And I think you've seen him regain that, especially without Terry and with Curtis Samuel, you know, still battling some soreness. We can talk about that too, but like, uh, Diami has really, I think, taken those reps and, and stepped up. So those would be two guys on my radar. Um, and, and, and I think Sam Cosby at right tackle line, that's not a guy you expect to like flash, but like, I think he can get a lot better even if he stays yeah. healthy. Like I think right. he could yeah. be for real, for real. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree. The Definitely. mountain. Yeah. He the mountain. <laughs> um, so from what you've seen so far out at training camp, um, obviously there's been a lot of hype made about how Carson Wentz has looked so far and his uh, connection with Jahan Dotson, but from like when they do nine on nines or 11 on 11s, offense versus defense, which side has kind of like been winning those battles and which side do you have more confidence in going into the season? I would say it's kind of even. Um, I would say there hasn't been, you know, one side beating the other consistently. Um, and I would say like the the buzz is certainly building around Carson, but I, but I would say that like, and, and I'm not trying to piggyback off narratives that happened before, right? Like I think that all the questions that, that the last two stops have had about him reaction to hard coaching and, and uh, you know, what he's like, if, if the, you know, if he is the one at fault, you know, can he take that responsibility? I, I don't think we have enough information yet to know if like, that's going to be, uh, if he's going to really answer those concerns or show that he's evolved. Like um, I, I don't think you ever see that until week one uh, until you get into the season. So, so I would, I would, I'm not saying pump the brakes, but I would say keep that in the back of your mind as you're hearing like, because he, he has the physical tools. No one's ever questioned that. It's how does he react? How is he in the locker room after that? Um, and so I would say, which unit do I have more confidence in? Like, guys, this is pretty crazy. If, if you took me a year ago and, and said that I was going to say the offense, like, I, I would have been like, nah, there's absolutely no way. But I, I do think the offense at this point, because Chase Young is still a question mark. I think the offense is kind of reloaded. And um, I, I'm still curious to figure out how they marry – the having a really good zone corner in Kendall and a really good man corner in Will Jack. Like, are, how do you find – Chris Harris told me the other day, like, they've sort of tweaked some of their defensive schemes. He wouldn't tell me, like, specifically, obviously. But um, I think they're trying to find out the answer to that question as well. So I would say the offense, like, like 55 60% confidence over the defense right now. Well, hey, apparently they have huge confidence in this offense. I mean, they expect them to be a top 12, yeah. top 13 unit, so – and, and talking about the what you're elaborating with Carson Wentz and the teammates aspect, I understand what you're saying, essentially, that you can't judge it until things start getting bad. Because when things are going good, it's easy to see. But when things are bad, that's when we really find out, you know, when the rubber meets the road, so to speak. But to wrap this up, Sam, I only have a couple more questions for you. First one being, Jahan Dotson, have you, I know you talked about him loosely, but can you just explain what have you seen from him in detail? What Are you excited about the pick now? Did I, did I tell you guys the Exos story last time I was on here? I don't think so. No. So I went out to Exos training facility. Oh, and you did, you did, you did, you did. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I won't bore y'all again. But, yeah, I think that this dude, like, uh, I think that this dude has the hands and has, the, like, the crisp route running um, that, like, they expected him to have, right? Like, I was talking to Drew Terrell um, yesterday, the receivers coach, and he was like, this guy has been everything that we thought. And I think there are some times where you get guys in and – and there's, you know, you know, a character thing or a work ethic thing that you're like, ah, I don't know. But this dude, like, is seems to be so far, all the information that we have is that he is is that guy. And not only that, like, um, I was talking to Taylor Stubblefield, his receivers coach at Penn State, and he talked about how smart this guy is. He ran a certain route called a ball route where, uh, you know, they, they'd line up three receivers one side and they'd ISO him. And he like he would have an option. He would have the option to run a dig. He would have the option to run a comebacker. And I think it was a post was the third one. But he was like, do you guys know how expensive that is for a college coach? Because you have to give that guy six looks where he can practice like choosing which, you know, choosing which uh, route he's going to run on the option. And like when you talk about a college coach and how the restriction of practice time they have. But but he was like, it was worth it because of how good and how smart Jahan is. So Mm -hmm. to me, like he's brought that to the to the building i've seen that so far absolutely i love to hear that sam and now rivera in his press conference early in the week at minicamp talked about the rumors of trading terry mclaurin and shot them down he said they're not looking to trade terry mclaurin that they are having good talks every time they talk it's it's not uh it's not contentious i think he said what the word was with the uh agent so things are in good spirits is that true do you find do you what's your opinion do you think that they're going to trade terry is that possible I, I think I think the is it contentious is a good question because like okay. 
Because John Allen said, you know, John Allen, who was in this position last year, was like, how could it not be personal at some point? Like, Terry McLaurin is, is 26 years old. Like, he has one chance to get a huge deal, right? And, like, when you're talking about a, uh, someone's livelihood, someone's ability to, like, set their family up for generations, like, you know, like John Allen skipped one week of minicamp last year, right? Because he was so – or skipped one week of OTAs because it, it got to that point. So, I, I would question – this is not a reported insight. This is just me being like, I don't know if it's not contentious. But so let's put it as on far the record. as – on the record, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mike Reed, put it down. <laughs> Everybody will uh, believe it if I put it But down. no, as far as like – as far as like will they trade Terry, I, I don't think that's ever been on the table. Uh, I, I'm, I would be super surprised if they did it. I think Ron is just going out of his way to be like, we got it. You know, like. You hear that, Pat McAfee? So stop <laughs> saying that – the Colts are going to trade for him every chance you get. It's not happening. Stop pushing that narrative. Yeah, absolutely. And now my last question for you, the Curtis Samuel. Um, obviously, Coach has been holding him out a little bit. And last offseason, I thought that that was probably maybe something Ron was doing to keep him secret so people wouldn't find out how good he was. But it turned out the injury was true. Obviously, he sidelined him last week uh, due to the uh, another tweak, po- being precautious. How concerned are you about uh, Curtis? So here's the thing is, is if Ron is being totally upfront, which, which I, you know, he was not last off season in terms of surgery, like uh, if he is this off season um, and there's no lingering medical concerns, then I, I would say, I would say it's going to be really telling in training camp. And usually I'm pretty hesitant about like reading too much into practices, as I've said before, but like right. with Curtis, there was such a difference between this off season when we saw him a year ago and, and what, what we saw in like May, because like he just looked more explosive. He looked faster. He was cutting harder. Like, and he talked about, he went down to Bomberito in Florida and he, and he, Bomberito pushed him to the point where he trusted the groin. He trusted his body again, which he tr- had trouble doing last year. If you go back and watch that Falcons game, like after the yards, after the catch, like you can tell he was not, you know, 100% Curtis Samuel. So to me, if we show up in Ashburn in late July and early August, and he looks like 2021 Curtis Samuel, then I'm concerned. If he looks like he it was May Curtis Samuel again, then I'm not. But I think that we will find out. I think we'll have some good information on whether what to expect from him sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Sam. And just to give you guys a recap, a training camp is starting July 27th in Ashburn. So that's when we'll be able to find out more a little bit about about Curtis Samuel. Sam, I can't thank you enough, brother. Hope you have an enjoy your Friday evening. Hopefully you put on some sunscreen when you go outside tonight because you might, dude, it's crispy out there, man. It's hot. I'm so pale, I I can't even leave my house. What's that? I'm so pale, I can't even leave my house. Oh, dude, I mean, like, you and I are probably about the same complexion, but I I forgot, like, earlier this week uh, to put sunscreen on. I FaceTimed my mom and she could tell right away, so (laughs) I had had to get the sunscreen on 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 Wednesday (laughs) and Thursday. Uh, maybe remember yeah. that for next time. Maybe get some makeup or something to make mom happy. I've got I've gotten sun poisoning like four times in my life, like big boils. So yeah, do that. I'm Ew, gonna die. Gross. Probably. Why would you say? Yeah. That? Dude, I, I, I will. I will certainly try to avoid that. Yeah, <laughs> please I, I do, passed Sam. out. Please I passed do. out against a, a Pepsi truck at um uh, Preakness, and because uh, I was drunk, <laughs> don't tell anybody. And uh, like half <laughs> of my face was in the sun, and I literally looked like Two Face or something. Like it was oh, like that's so gross. My outer appearance matched my inner appearance, just very Two Face. It was terrible. <laughs> Let's get Sam out of here before picture he throws it did, out. Picture it didn't happen, bro. Put yeah. put him on Twitter. <laughs> now, yeah, I, I I'll let me find him for you. I Sam, you. thank you so much oh, for joining yeah. us, brother. Have a good night. Yeah. Thanks. All right, everybody, we just spoke with the man again, Mr. Sam Fortier, the Washington Post. I did, I'm telling you, I just enjoy listening to him talk. I know he doesn't yeah. want to – he didn't want to give us anything good uh, with Jahan and everything, but I do appreciate him trying to because I, I wanted to hear about Jamin too uh, yeah. just because I wanted to see how Jamin looked because I, I did notice that in Jamin's press conference he kept saying comfortable, like, <clears throat> like being more – not reactive, but being more attacked style. And I wa- was wondering if maybe Sam had seen that at all. Yeah, I mean, hey, he named him as one of the players he expects to break out. So, I mean, and Sam's always so fun to have on here. He's, he's such a bro, and he's so smart. So. <laughs> he is He is a bro. You could tell he's a total bro. But the latest yeah. news that came out that Washington Commanders came out with their training camp event schedule. Training camp is going to be going on from July 27th to August 18th. There is a free practice event at FedEx Field on Saturday, August 6th. Hall, I know uh, we went. I, I went last year. I'm not sure if you did last year. Uh, no, nah, I didn't go. I forget why I didn't go. I had something to do, but yeah. 
And then training camp in Ashburn, obviously, fans can attend through a fan lottery system. This excludes the season ticket holders and the gold season ticket holders. They'll be able to have more special uh, privileges, uh, you could say, than us common folk. Yeah, I'm not even a season ticket holder, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like lowest on the food chain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you I'm are. Like, yeah. I'm like below you because you're like on the food yeah. chain. I'm not I like, on I like the sound of that. I like pay- yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah. That took you a while, dude. That got me a little excited, though. Now I'm ready to go. Oh. All right, so now I'm pulling up this question from our friend, Kevin, a.k.a. Cracky. Two-part question. If a contract doesn't get done, will Terry play this year on his rookie deal, or will he hold out? It, and then, quote, if he holds out of training camp and his agent says he will hold out all season without a new deal, would you trade him then, Hall? Um. Well, to answer the first part of it, I don't think he's going to hold out a training camp because I think a deal gets it done. And even if a deal doesn't get done, I don't think Terry's the type of guy that's going to, excuse me, they think they're not going to, not the type of guy that's going to hold out and like not play during the season when it comes to games. I mean, you also got to think about it. Like he's a third round pick. So he's not one of these first round picks that can kind of afford to be giving up that fine money and like missing games, missing game checks and whatnot. So to answer the first part, that's how I feel about that. And the second part of it, I mean, honestly, if it came to that, I would probably still keep him just because yeah. he's the dude. And obviously, the trade value is kind of going to be diminished at that point because it'll be training camp or right. almost some point through training camp, maybe even during the season. So you're not going to be able to get, like, the highest amount of value for him as you would as opposed to, like, maybe leading up to the draft or before the draft or whatnot. So – Basically, it's not going to happen, so I don't even know why you asked the question. Right. <laughs> it's because uh, – so Kevin is a Raiders fan, and he's been pressing us all summer long about the possibility of, of Terry being traded. And I've been trying to tell him it's not going to happen. But, Hall, you're absolutely right. That was my first counter-rebuttal to Kevin, was essentially – this is a third-round pick. I know he ta- he talked about Khalil Mack and used him as an example of somebody that held out. And I was like, look, I understand he's a first-round pick, though. So he had more money. He could be able to uh, – deal with the fines Terry McLaurin a third round pick who makes two million this year I'm pretty sure if he held out all season he wouldn't have much money from this season collected right is my overall opinion and then also Terry McLaurin is also high in age already he's tw- what, 26 27 and so sitting out a year we saw what that did to somebody like Lev Bell when you're raising his age level that's probably actually worse than what Terry wants to do at this moment so like you said I don't think a holdout is possible but if he did hold out I still wouldn't trade him I'd keep him here because the draft pick doesn't do anything for you right now. So you could trade him in the off season and next off season. Maybe he comes back midway. He can always help you out in that way. I, if he held out, which I highly doubt he ever would, I would still keep him to be perfectly honest, but no, I don't think he's ever going to get traded, man. Terry's going to be here long-term. Right. Right. And Oh, sorry. Hold on. That's a, I have an alarm on my phone that goes off anytime anybody asks a stupid question so we can move on. <laughs> dude that's great good job love you cracky i'm just kidding that was awesome no kevin deserves it dude he talks so much crap uh the first now we're gonna go to the colonel who texted me this question in ron's press conference he commented they were still evaluating the linebacker strengths and weaknesses before do- deciding on who would be a best fit coming to the team as a free agent are there any other positions where you see the commanders pursuing a free agent um i've always been somebody who i, I I mean, even last year after we lost Ryan Kerrigan, I thought that we should always try to get uh, more depth along the defensive line, especially the edge rusher, because I was always saying if something happens to Montez and Chase Young last year. But I do like that they brought in Obata. But I I would still say you could never have enough pass rushers. Uh, I think that that's a premium position in the NFL, and uh, you got to rotate these guys so much. And coming off of injuries, I I mean, coming off, who knows what could happen. I I just think it's good to have uh, as many pass rushers as possible. But I do still like Obata. I think he's going to play a big role. Yeah, I, th- I think Star Lotulale, um is out there as well, obviously, because he has experience with Ron. He played for Carolina. Everyone's going to come at the Commanders. Uh, they get so funny. Not It's not that funny anymore, dude. They, they kind of beat that dry. But I think Star Lotulale is somebody they could bring in uh, just as defensive line depth. Um, I have a lot of co- confidence in Fedarian Mathis, but I just would feel a lot better about that room if they add another veteran. But you brought up Ryan Kerrigan. I wouldn't be against Ryan Kerrigan being here, not because of him being productive or anything like that, but just the veteran presence in the room. We talked about that on Monday, right, being, bringing that veteran presence to the edge rushers, and I feel like that's something that is missed. And I, I would not mind to see Ryan back in this uniform, especially as clear 
clean, nice looking uniform where he could feel good in. Yeah, um, I missed the part about where you asked about Ryan Kerrigan, but that was going to be part of my answer is I would definitely say that uh, edge rusher is one position. Um, I could definitely maybe see the secondary being something just because obviously you've got your four guys in the as the uh, the starters, Curl, McCain, William Jackson, and Kendall Fuller. Then you got Benjamin St. Juice is kind of that fifth guy, that 11th defender possibly on the field. But after that, it kind of gets kind of thin on that back end. I, get, I think your next best cornerback is a guy like Corn Elder, who's getting up there to age, kind of bounced around the league a lot. Danny like, Johnson. Like, Great like, name, though. Panthers, come Panthers, ha, ha, ha. But, uh, yeah, I, I, another, like, maybe I would say sleeper type of position they might bring in, I would say, say, say Carter Samuels. Carter Samuel is um, – Injured like last year, Ron's kind of playing that kind of telling the media whatever he wants to tell him game again. I could definitely see them maybe going out after a veteran wide receiver that gets cut or maybe like uh, like a really cheap wide receiver, maybe like a one-year deal or something like that. See, I I like the idea of that, but I would I still want Cam Sims to get more opportunities. You know, if something if something would like that were to happen, that's where somebody like Cam Sims would benefit, and that like going to get a vet would take that away. You know what I mean? I know. I would look. I would love that, but for whatever reason. This coaching staff just does not want to give Cam Sims the type of run that everyone wants him to get. So yeah. I mean, but then like that goes back to Logan Paulson's point to us before about like you. Sh- I know you having the Homer glasses on, but you should always be trying to get better. And in this context, you're probably Wait, right about that. Homer. Logan, Logan, Paul, you mean Jake Paul's brother? Oh no, I'm sorry. That's the that's the YouTuber Logan yeah. Paul. This one is my best friend. That's the one is you're he, quoting. I, I don't think you've ever said that before. Now, no, but Hall, he's a good friend of mine. I want to go back to you with this second question from the Colonel. AGG has been a favorite despite limited snaps. We all love him, but does he have a realistic shot at making the squad with the sick depth we have at tight end right now? Yeah, I would say no. I was, I mean, just for the simple fact that they had to kind of switch his position up just to even get him some reps and get him some looks and just to bring him back to the team. I would say that chances are probably slim to none and it's not even just based off of his potential and the type of growth that he might show during the season it's just based off of this kind of log jam in the position right now and you got logan thomas obviously john bates and then just drafted cole turner i mean i guess you can keep a fourth guy for the practice squad but, but that could be samus reyes or one of the undrafted guys that have shown off. they could still want to develop samus reyes and again at the end undrafted of the day, dudes if you couldn't make it at wide receiver I know the like a lot more blocking goes into it. You got to bulk up a lot more. You got to block defensive ends, linebackers, and whatnot. I just can't see AGG being that consistent, just blocking tight end and consistent every down tight end, or even a consistent pass catching tight end. To be honest with you, so unfortunately, I don't think it makes a squad. Yeah, and I think uh, Coach Rivera in his press conference talked about how AGG came into camp sitting at 230, 230 pounds, which is probably good for his size. Uh, he's probably on the lower end of the tight ends, but he still has great size for the for the position. Uh, but you brought it up, Paul. It's the whole blocking uh, aspect of it because the tight end position is so hard to play because you have to be able to block like a lineman but catch like a wide receiver and separate on routes like a receiver. And it's very, very hard to do. It's it's hard to get that mixture in there. And I like Samus Reyes. I mean, not Samus Reyes. I like um, I like AGG a lot, obviously. I loved him when we drafted him in the fourth round. I hope he does excel a lot. Um, but that being said, I, I trust Juan Castillo now because I understand I understood what Ron Rivera said in his presser talking about Juan Castillo because, it, like I said, the tight end position has so much to do with the blocking scheme. So they're always in meetings together and everything. And Juan Castillo being an O-line coach, that's how it's easy for him to transition to the tight end spot. And when I heard Ron Rivera talk about it in this presser, I said, oh, my light bulb went off. I was like, that makes a ton of sense why you'd bring him in now. And that being said... I think that that would benefit AGG. And so AGG be- can become a legitimate blocker and be, be be a better blocker than some of these other guys behind Cole Turner. I think he can make the squad without a doubt just because he has that vet- more veteran, more time under his belt and more acclimated to the pros than these other guys. I think Ron and company would be privy, privy to keep him, if that makes sense, Reed. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, like- – uh, you guys both said it's really just a log jam at the position and what he has to offer. Um, I mean, now, if you want the final tight end on your roster to be able to do a Rubik's Cube really fast, an easier guy. But until then, uh, it, it's going to take him some time. And I like him. Like I said, I just think that plays like Cole Turner, Armani Rogers, even same as Reyes. Uh, I just think that right now they offer more and probably have higher upside. But, hey, HEG could go up. Maybe, who knows? I mean, we've seen some highlights of him making some pretty crazy catches so far during OTAs. I mean, maybe, maybe he goes off, maybe he gets the blocking thing down. Probably not. But if he does, hey, shout out to his family, you know. 
Yeah, absolutely. If I really hope that he can make this squad, dude, because I, I cheered so loudly when he got drafted that if it's, <laughs> if it goes south, I'm going to look terrible. That being yeah. said, last question from the Colonel Reed. I'll, I'll ask you this. I'm not sure if you have any insight, but can you shed any light on what kind of fan activities are scheduled at FedEx Field on August 6th when the commanders host practice? For example, are the players going to be available for autographs and such? Uh, what was the I, don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked. Yeah. Um, last looked last year, Colonel, when I went for the practice at FedEx Field, and I absolutely loved this idea because before in the past with the Redskins, it always felt like FedEx Field was like a foreign territory, almost like it was a, a mutual stadium aspect to it and i i really love the idea that they're having practice at fedex field because it makes you more comfortable in that setting last year it was a great experience being able to watch practice on fedex field i don't think that players really came over for autographs but i don't know if that had anything to do with covid so i'm not sure if possibly not being as bad this season that they'll be able to allow the players to go co-mingle and everything like that but there was a ton of activities for everybody to do to go look at the locker room all this other stuff that happened at uh, practice last year it was a lot of fun. I, I highly recommend everybody going. Yeah, uh, I didn't go last year. Um, I only heard like one eighth of the question because my computer froze. But <laughs> it seemed like it was a good time. I definitely wanted to go. Hopefully I could be able to make it out this year. And I will say they also seem to always go above and beyond when it comes to fan stuff, like like trying to do all that they can to make fans feel appreciated. And when it's, I'm sure there'll be some cool stuff going on. Yeah, did you no, see uh, they they... Hate the fans? Yeah, you was... know this they hate the fans they i know there's that whole part of it too the, they <laughs> don't care about you guys they don't like you guys so uh, i was gonna bring up the eagles changing their name yeah uh, their font size to their they changed it from being curved to just being a simple straight and look i'm the only reason i made a comment on twitter is because it was obviously it was a loaded comment but essentially saying like did they coordinate with their fans on any of this on any of these adjustments <laughs> Basically saying, like, you guys were sitting here complaining about the entire process when, in fact, guys, a lot of these right. people don't even give you that chance. No. And that's what my whole process was, you know? No, that makes sense. That makes a, that makes a, that's a good point. They didn't give us a chance. They had yeah. commanders picked out from the get-go, so it was all a sham. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, 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 I know. They didn't pick fan ambassadors or anything. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's move on to the Discord chat server for our next question. This is from Sergio Martin on the Discord chat. Who's your number one draft pick of fantasy football this year? He's seeing people who always were running back, running back, going wide receiver, wide receiver with no hesitation. I myself have taken Jamar Chase in the very first round and Kelsey in the second in some leagues. What do you think, Reed? That's tough, man. Um, there's so many there's so many good backs, but I, I mean, Jonathan Taylor, for me, I, I'm still, I know that wide receivers have, are, it's a passing league. It's getting crazy with, with the numbers that they can put up and stuff. But a lot of, every time I've went wide receiver first, it always seems like it backfires and my teams are in, but uh, it's because there's no running backs really. But yeah, I, I'm going Jonathan Taylor first. I mean, if I have another number one pick, that's a given for me. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard for me to say, uh, but uh, honestly it's, it's, it's between Cooper cup or Justin Jefferson. I'm like at the number one overall pick. I understand your comment, Sergio, but uh, the only reason is because in our big league, I have, I have the option to be able to pick either Cooper Cup or Justin Jefferson. And Cooper Cup is later on, later rounds, like in the fifth round. And so if I'm having the one overall pick, I'm going to scoop up Justin Jefferson just so I can retain those two guys. But Wait, what's this question? If, if if you take a wide receiver first? No, who who, who is your number oh, okay. one player that you'd be taking in the first round of fantasy draft? Oh, okay, draft? okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so if I was the GM of a fantasy football team, I would make Tim Tebow my starting quarterback and he'd be my starting quarterback. <laughs> I'm I'm Hull, writing dude, I'm, dude, Hull, dude yeah. Hull made it funny, dude. I'm 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 writing the owners every week so that way they know I'm still available. I should have sized it though. I should have like ah! I was I was trained how to scout fantasy from Matthew Barry and uh I was <laughs> also Aaron Hernandez is a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> my first pick. Um honestly I'm really high on a guy like Austin Eckler this year. I mean I'm not gonna take him first overall, obviously, but I love Austin Eckler. Yeah. I never get the first overall pick, but uh, Austin Eckler is a guy that I usually try to target in the back half of the draft, which is where I usually live at. So Austin Eckler is a guy I really love. Receptions, running the ball, touchdowns. He gives you all three of the, the trifecta of the uh, fancy world. Yeah, and just to give you guys a heads up, like, we're talking about PPR formats because, like, that's the majority of what we play. And, dude, I think I should, like, take a picture of my squad last year, even though I fell short. Dude, the wide receivers I had were absolutely disgusting. Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Keenan Allen, and Debo Samuel. It was Jesus. like, and we have double flexes. So I, yeah, had, I was about to say, if you had double flexes, it was just disgusting. 
he was scoring like over like a hundred plus like every single week. It was actually really effing ridiculous. And I had Derrick Henry too until he and obviously he got hurt. But my team was just yeah. un, un re, just yeah. unstoppable. It was how many guys did you blow to get that roster? No, but then in the playoffs, Dan in the first game of the playoffs after I had to first buy puts up two hundred points. Like, out of nowhere. That always seems to happen. It, yeah, it's like, I remember when I was at a, going in the finals, like, I was killing everybody all season. Then all of a sudden, I go up against somebody who had Alvin Kamara around Christmas when he went for that six-touchdown game or something. Right. And I was like, what do you do about that? Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> all right, now our next question from the Discord chat server is from Andy Lockhart, Scout Sandy in the UK. Oi! Oi! Why do coaches get fined for having OTA that are too physical? Who decides that the rule, and why can't a coach coach the way he want, Reed? Uh, well they have these rules to keep players safe player safety first of all first and foremost in the nfl but yeah i mean i agree i think it's a little dumb i think but ron knew that apparently ron was getting pissed with all that going on so uh, some things are just out of his hand and yeah it sucks but they do it to prevent injuries obviously i would imagine right yeah and that, that's exactly it just because it's the uh bargaining agreement between the players association and the nfl they got to be able to negotiate and find a middle ground. And so they, the players, if you're going to give me, if you're going to make me play seven, eight, 17 games, right? 17 games, 18, whatever. I don't know, man. I'm all over the 17 place, right? games. 18 but if weeks, you're going to extend yeah. it, you have to be able to in the early in the, in the season, be able to take some pl- weight off my plate, right? Because if you're going to make me play longer, you're going to stop demanding so much physical uh, nature of me to be present because that's liable for injury, right? So that's why it's like a kind of seesaw effect. You owners want the extra game the players want less contact at practices which is why the nfl has to oversee that aspect of it maintain that rule and then fine according to that so it's not really like the nfl not allowing guys to coach it's essentially that they have to so they don't abrupt the contract with the nfl pa they have to contractually do it essentially is my opinion yeah i mean Back in my day, we had a little thing called two a day, you know, when uh, football players were actually football players. Not wearing but, skirts, right? Yeah, I've been playing they... football since '64. <laughs> but nowadays, that's sexist, so you can't say this <laughs> skirts thing anymore. So. Yeah. Um. Now, nah, but you guys pretty much hit all the points. It's pretty much for player safety. There's more games now. There's more weeks in the NFL season. Uh, the whole CTE thing pretty much scaled back all the, all the off season stuff and. Just all the wear and tear on your body that goes into it. We have a lot of the uh, information from the older players, the retired players now that that stuff is not really as needed as it was, as you, as they make it out to seem, I guess you should say like that. So, yeah, it's just sure. one of those prevent injuries. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, the next question is from Jeff Miles, who we have to give a congratulations to. Because yeah. our guy, Jeff Miles, was accepted into submitting his artwork for FedEx Field to be put up for the fan fan stuff yeah you put it in the discord chat server told us the other day congratulations jeff man you deserve it yeah. man i cannot so wait awesome. to s- i cannot I wait to see what he comes out with but right. you should sneak my name in there like yeah, backwards like in something yeah, <laughs> uh, now just question read i'm gonna go to you first what game are you most excited for this season whether it's because it's a revenge game easy win themed home game or possible playoff birth game I mean, so obviously the game starts at the end of the season. I, I would say usually, I mean, you look at those uh, as like the playoff type games. So hopefully they have a playoff field too. But right now, man, with all this entire offseason, the way it's gone, I'm excited to play the Colts. Like I've never hated an owner outside of Dance Center so bad other than uh, Jim Irsay. Like it's just like keep Carson's name out of your mouth. Stop doing this. And they've eased up, but it's still I want to give him a, you know, a little something to go home and cry and play his guitar to. Yeah, for for me, it's going to be selfish. The Minnesota Vikings mm-hmm. game, the wearing the all blacks. I want to the military appreciation game. I'm ready. I'm ready to see these uniforms. I'm like, dude, I, I imagine seeing them on the field all at once. You know, actually the all black uniforms, the black helmet. It, it's I cannot wait going against Kirk Cousins. You know, Camo. Dude, yeah. yeah, it's going to be so sick. Dude. I cannot wait for that game. Um. Yeah, I definitely would probably say blackout game against the vikings i think like you said the black jerseys i wish it was a night game or at least even like an afternoon game but one o'clock game it's gonna be blacked out in the stadium hopefully and hopefully uh play a good game against the vikings but i will say my one b answer for the game i'll say week one just because nothing's better than week one and the uk mm-hmm. guys are coming over we're gonna right. party it up and go to the game and honestly we went to week one last year they lost to the chargers so i feel like this year i'm gonna go to week one to see a win 
Yeah, week one you still have hopes and dreams, and then like you get like a month into the season, you're like, "Eh." no, I've never been to a game where they've actually won the game. Every game, oh really? Stop going. What is wrong with you? Oh no, I'm sorry. Thanksgiving, the first thing. Okay, there you go. You redeemed yourself. The Giants, they won that game. Well, you were also at the game with the Packers when they beat the Packers on Monday Night Uh, Football. You're right. See, or was that Sunday Night Football? That was Sunday Night Football, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, th- so that is also the best best story in the world because we were doing the we were doing the sports drunkies then and we were doing these like little preview videos for the primetime game so we'd like basically say what we thought the total points would be who would win and what player would ball out and so we did this they did this short video so it's Hall in between two Packers fans that are in the group and the Packers fans are literally bludgeoning you know the Redskins saying they're gonna get destroyed forty five to nothing like th- that normal type of stuff. Hall gets up there. He's like, nah, we're going to get the win. It's going to be straight. Everything's going to be fine. Go into the stadium, and Hall puts out this video of he's around Packers fans, and they have a substantial lead at this point, the Redskins do, and Hall's just looking around going, woo, <laughs> woo, the whole time. Uh, that yeah, was a I'm great, great Hall. moment. Dripping that, uh, on that game. That was when Dan Snyder was dancing. You remember that in the, in the suite? Yeah, dance night. I'm more like dance There's Snyder. a lady walking by with like a cheese head on her head, and she was like crying. And I was like, oh, why are you crying? Ah, woo! <laughs> what <laughs> why if, are you crying? <laughs> woo! What if she was like, it's because I just got this big piece of cheese stuck on my head. I can't get it off. Like, it was like real. <laughs> That's messed up. Reed, uh, now Jeff Miles' the next question. Who do you see as a surprise that will make the 53-man roster and a surprise to be cut? Mm, so I'm going to say a surprise to be cut. I'll go that route first. Um, I, I'm going to say surprise to be cut is uh, going to be a little old Jared Patterson. Surprise to make the roster is going to be Alec Erickson, the wide receiver, for his return abilities. Okay. But what about your surprise cut? I just said the first one, uh, Jared Patterson. So, oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, Jared Patterson, really? Yeah, I think he could. Numbers game, you know, uh, depending on what they do. I don't like it, but. That's rough waters. Um, who who surprise cut? Surprise cut. I'm not 100 percent sure to be perfectly honest. Maybe like Jeremy Reeves, unfortunately, which Jeremy always gets subject yeah. to that. But Coach Rivera talked glowingly of Jeremy last week. The only reason I'm saying that is just we don't know what's going to go on with that safety position. And obviously, Jeremy Reeves is coveted by the fan base, myself included. Uh, so hopefully, he does make the team. But I guess that would be a surprise cut, which is honestly yeah. just a compliment to Jeremy. Jeremy and what I think of him. And then uh, the surprise make of the squad, I'd say AGG, like we alluded to earlier. What about you, Hall? So my surprise cut is Carson Wentz. No, um, <laughs> surprise cut, I would say I really kind of saw mine just because I can't really think of anyone. That's what I do. That so was the first one that popped in my head would be Jared Hack Patrick. into your computer and read your <laughs> sheet. <laughs> but uh, my surprise make, I will say the undrafted rookie tight end Hodges. I think that uh, – He's been yeah. kind of showing out, be hearing a lot of buzz around his name here and there. Mm-hmm. I think once they get the pads on, he might show a little something in camp, and he'll t- overtake the spot that AGG uh, is trying to get on the roster. Absolutely, and then I'm glad nobody yeah. picked Taylor as a surprise cut, man, because uh, that that would hurt bad. But I know I said that. Like, yes, I did, and I felt bad about it. Okay. I didn't feel right. I wanted to be cool, wanted to be make big news. But read this next question. This is from Hercules. Tell Mark. Hercules on Twitter, and I actually forgot about this question on Monday and overlooked it, and I apologize to Herc you. I told him it was going to be the first question answered, and I messed that up as well. But I got you, Herc. This is a question from uh, regarding the mascot. Does Washington already have a mascot selected, and the fan engagement program coming up is just for show, or will they really listen to what, what everyone wants? I go, um, oh, that, shame. Damn, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I really think that I, they probably have it narrowed down to a couple of things or a few things. Um, but I also think that, it, I mean, if somebody submits something that nobody's thought of yet, that's awesome. I think that maybe they'll be like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah, no, I can see that. But they probably got the list narrowed down to a few things. And uh, your vote will influence that slightly a little bit, you know, Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. Honestly, I mean kind of hope that they already have it picked out that way it's yeah. not like blindsiding some dumb off of a whim you know yeah i mean they probably do already have like a, a certain type of theme that they want to like put out there for the the mascot so right i think a lot of the options will be based off of that obviously there's going to be everyone that's like it's a sham jason Wright's the worst it's all a farce but i think they really are trying to engage with the fans and i think that some of the input will go into it but it, i don't think that like the fans will have 100 percent control over like what the mascot looks like hey yeah, remember that dude he said what jason wright was a snake is that what he said in his tweet that jack Del Rio responded to p 
people are so, people are so weird, man. Why do you hate Jason? <laughs> Jason didn't do anything. Uh, but I, I, I do under I do agree with what you're saying, Herc. Is they're probably not they're probably going into this with already assuming what they want, right? Essentially with this mascot. And that what they're going to do is they're going to gauge fans to be able to bring that tunnel vision down, but they still also have to make the decision based on the best thing for business, right? And so I can understand why they would use the fans to kind of trickle that business aspect in with with allowing fans to feel good about what's happening and feeling included. The fact that you do ha- just have the ability to submit your opinion, I think is a, a great way to do business and a great way to be a fan of this team. I don't think I don't see other teams doing. It. I don't see the Eagles requesting people to submit their uh, what they want is like a new name or whatever the new font that they used, the mm-hmm. stupid font that that it looked but now we are joined by our next guest mr steve Lim of the command this podcast how you doing steve yep, how you doing go. brother hey what's up fellas how are you man doing great man you sound great i'm glad that you were finally able to get here sir and, and look yes. at that helmet in the background it yeah. always looks so good every time Matt. i see it yeah that is beautiful that is, is beautiful. Uh, but, Steve, we just answered a question from one of our uh, guys on Twitter, Hercules, asking, does Washington already have a, a mascot selected and the fan engagement program coming up is just for show? Or will they really listen if they want something else? Uh, I mean, according to all the rhetoric they're pushing out, it sounds like they are listening to the fans. <laughs> but, but, but you never know with this team. At the end of the day, it is all about money. It's all about marketing. And sometimes the fans don't know what's best for that. You know what I'm saying yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's exactly what I was alluding to is like, yeah, you can use it as a direction to, to make sure that you're kind of scoping your whole entire operation around it, but that shouldn't be the only basis for what you're selecting off of to your point. But I want to keep this next question with you, Steve, the answer first, this is from our guy, Scott Hartley in the UK. Oi, what are your thoughts on Curtis Samuel and him nursing another injury? I would normally give the benefit of the doubt, but the team fed us the story last season. How concerned are you? Oy, hey, Scott. What's up, man? Uh, well, as you know, we went to OTAs. Curtis looked great. He yeah, looked he slick. He looked fresh. Cuts were good. But it, it, it's scary, man. I don't want to say it's like the Steven Strasburg thing, but this is the, at some point it's, it's put up or shut up. Uh, I am a little worried, especially, I mean, I'm pretty sure Terry's going to be back at least for this final season, but Jahan Dots is the insurance policy across wide receiver one and wide receiver two. So at the end of the day, we didn't have him last year. We seem to do pretty well. I mean, we, we, we do have the Ami and the Hopper along with Cam and, and, and that tight end core who's going to be a great, great asset with J.D. McKissick, who's a converted wide receiver as well. So not too worried Curtis is going to beat her, but, man, I sure wish he was. Hey, yeah, that's a good point. What about you, Reed? How concerned are you about Curtis? Um, I think based off of last year, like early on in this, early on last year, I wasn't concerned at all because I just kept telling myself for some dumb reason that it was everything was going to be fine. It's not that big of a deal. I believed everything. But and then, like, how could you not be semi worried after last year? You know, I, I mean, it was just so disappointing that I'm fairly worried. I, I'd put myself at about a six, but all reports are that, it, like you guys said, he looked, he's looked fantastic so far. Um, I really, I'm hoping it's just a precautionary thing, like they're saying, and uh, he'll, he'll be fine. But I, I'm putting myself just based off last year out of six. I am definitely concerned um, because obviously these injuries, they're, they can be kind of tweaky in this way where something very small, just one route can take you out for an entire season, right? But it almost gives me the feels from like 2013, 2014 from RG3 hurting his ankle and that Jacksonville Jaguars game when Kirk came in where it's almost like, you know, like you feel like you're never going to get the 100% again. If that makes sense. Obviously, we never did get it. But, like, that's the kind of feeling that comes back. So that's why I am concerned about it. Just because of past experiences with this sort of stuff. Like, like Josh Doxson. I mean, that dude had what he had something in his ankle. What was it, Hall? And, like, they did MRIs. They did so many different things. They could not find an issue. His mind. It was all. (laughs) Yeah, of course. (laughs) It's Paul Richardson vibes. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Paul Richardson (laughs) vibes. Or it's like Mark L. Fultz just forgot how to play. He didn't want to show it. But I will say, I don't think the team is feeding us a bad story. Essentially, they just don't want Curtis Samuel to get down in the dumps. They're not going to throw him by the wayside. So, yeah, this is a big deal, you know, because then Curtis is going to be bumped out. So they got to be like, it is? Yeah, we're right. Damn. Yeah, like, this I mean, sucks. Yeah. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. So, well, going back to last year, I would have just been like, ah, you know, it's early. Training camps in like six weeks. He has a month to get, get good. Everything will be fine. And we heard that story all of last year. <laughs> So like you guys said, to to not be skeptical skeptical would be honestly would just be crazy. But yeah. there's something slightly in the back of my mind that says just from seeing him up close and personal, I just feel like 
he'll be good to go hopefully by training camp. And like, because like, who knows a man's body better than you? You know. <laughs> You know how, right. <laughs> I w- I could al- also understand to your point, Hall, about like looking at it, like seeing him in OTA, Steve, like you said, he looked explosive, like very, very yeah. fast. I even made the comment to him when he walked by to us that he looked incredibly fast. And I can see Ron Rivera and company saying, OK, he's looking great. Let's shut him down. In t- just for training until training camp because we don't want to risk injury during OTAs and practices. And I would absolutely love that. Maybe if that's happening, but why would they lie at that point? Like, why would they say that he's rehabbing or taking care of being precautious? Why can't you just say we're shutting him down to be safe? The one thing I just will, like conspiracy theory, like conspiracy thing in my mind is all three of the practices that he's missed have been when the media has been there. So it's like, are y'all trying to hold him back so the media doesn't see something that they don't want to see? Like, that's the only thing where I'm kind of like, uh, do you think they play chess? <laughs> I it's think possible. they do. I think they yeah. do, especially Coach having that constitution on his desk. But, Reed, I'm going to go to you with this next question from Scott. The team is trying to change the culture on and off the field, yet I've seen loads of fans on here fighting with each other recently. Does winning change this? And how do you change a cloud of negative energy around the fan base, media, wi- wider NFL? Yeah, I mean, media, I, I'm sorry, uh, winning is uh, probably the biggest thing. But another thing, it's going to take a while. Remember, for a long time, I talked about this the other night on a Parker show. Um, remember a long time ago, like, DJ Swanger gets cut for speaking out despite, like, everything was always like, there's always leaks coming out. It was always something about Scott McLuhan, this and that. So that's why I feel like Ron was kind of, like, reserved at first about addressing the Jack Del Rio situation. Uh, I think that he was kind of like, all right, well, we're just going to shoot this down. Maybe it'll go away. Then it didn't go away. So he was like, all right, well, now, now I got to address it. So I do think that they're trying to change, and it will eventually. It's just going to take a lot of time and a lot of wins. It, it came. It got resurfaced out that Ron Rivera was at his son's wedding in France uh, during those days, which is why it took him so long to respond. Well, also, yeah, like we said, he's building a completely new thing. It's not, it's not, his, uh, it's not his style to talk about things, really, and it, he wants to deal with things his way. So I, I think that it's just a combination of things, but it will – get there i hope steve i I really want to know your opinion on this uh because obviously you you are big in the addicts group obviously on facebook you guys been around a long time andy burrows from the uk is visiting us week one talks about you guys all the time and how influential you were to him what how do you how do you see this playing out with scott's question about the fans infighting do you think winning will change it oh yes sir man like winning changes everything you just just go back to 2012 we had the we had Rex Grossman, we had John Beck. 2012 comes along, we weren't caring about anything right. else. Yeah. Nothing. Winning yes. cures everything. All the drama Good. goes away. Look at other franchises too, like the Bengals. Bengals were laughing like Browns. I mean, granted, they probably will be again after that yep. trade. But uh, like people kind of stopped talking about them being the Browns for a little bit when they when they were in playoff contention. Now it's yep. back to well they've made a Browns move but. see like the whole cloud of negative with the media and everything I don't think that'll ever go away because that's essentially nah. their job they're supposed to be able to go in and be the mouthpiece for the fan base essentially the fan base wants to know what's going wrong right so when things are going negatively that's what's going to be harped on it's what's going to be highlighted and looked on and talked about a lot so when they start winning a lot the media obviously is going to change their tune a little bit they're going to hop on board they're going to be the biggest cheerleaders this team has ever seen they're the reason why they're playing well it's because the media is feeding them the information that they are but I agree with the fan base. Fan base is going to love each other when they start winning games. Uh, they're going to do well. The only issue that I have is like when you start winning that culture and then you start turning into like the Patriots fan base where like you lose against the Dolphins in week 15 and you're 13 and whatever. And then you're like complaining about the loss. Like, oh, Bill yeah. Belichick is losing the grip on the team. Like, <laughs> He's like, overrated. Like you're always going to have. It takes a lot of winning yeah. to get first there, right? world team problems. Yeah. You right. Know? Yeah, you're right. always going to have these arguments because people, this is what people do. They argue, they talk and they, they yeah. have differing opinions. It's always going to happen. But especially with this fan base, just because this one is like, it's under a microscope. It's almost like under a uh, microscope out in the sun, you know, because a uh, magnifying glass under the sun, because of all the sexual assault allegations and name yeah. change, this fan base of the past two years has really just been in like, it almost is like the Coliseum to an extent where it's just like a bunch of infighting about different things and none of it really matters in the grand right. scheme. Of and, and, and when they do these, 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 polls about best fans in the league like look what we've been through we've been through probably you can say we've been through more than a lot of teams have in a long time and we're still here you know what i'm saying right. so the browns are just they're just bad because they're bad like we we, we have a history of winning but we're dealing with all this other non-football stuff so we're still lawyer we'll still here man we have some of the best fans in the league i don't care what anyone else says 
Absolutely. Yeah. Wholeheartedly agree with you. And I, I do think that this fan base could be brought into the same light as like the Buffalo fan base, the Packer fan base, the Steeler, Steeler nation, everyone like that. The only issue is that like the whole caveat, the excuse of Dan Snyder, like I want the fan base to be well re- represented. So whenever I've said that on Twitter, it's not that me trying to f- fan police you. I'm just trying, I want the fans to have the good confidence, the the swagger that these other fan bases do going to these games because it almost feels like foreign territory whenever we go to FedEx. And and what, also, what, what was it? Real fast, my bad. There was there was that uh, poll that was released or the, the thing about um, negative uh, Twitter comments per franchise and Washington was second to last and it was like way in the neck, like the amount of negativity that was going on recently. And it's just, uh, look at what's been going on though. I mean, of course people are going to be negative and what we've suffered through for the last 30 years, but we'll get there. We yeah, will. Absolutely. And then so to wrap this up, Steve, I'm going to talk about your weekend, sir. Father's Day is coming up. What do you what do you got? Yeah, planned? Uh, going to see an old army buddy coming in town from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. We're going to go to Annapolis lacrosse tournament, visit them. And then I get to see my family down in uh, Springfield. Um, we're going to go down there for early dinner Saturday and Sunday. I don't even know what I'm going to do, man. Probably, Isn't that the best? You know what I mean? Smoke <laughs> brisket, go to the pool, have cooler beer. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. And I have Monday off, too. So. Gonna go watch Top Gun on Monday with the wife. So, oh, there, there you go. go. I haven't, I haven't seen it yeah. yet. Ken Johansson keeps asking me every week if I've seen it yet, and I to keep unfortunately have to tell him I have it. But I wanted to say thank you for your service, Steve. Yeah, really, hey, really appreciate my, it. my pleasure, my pleasure. Hey, and thanks for what you guys do, man. You guys are the trendsetters, man. You got, you guys are the legends, man. We appreciate what you guys do in the content creator community, and you know, always just reaching out, you know, setting the setting the standard for everybody else. So, Shit, that, thank you. Well. Yeah. That's a that's a low standard. I'll tell you that right now, my friend. <laughs> Steve, I, I do appreciate I do appreciate the comments, sir. Uh, but before yep. we get out of here, Steve, if you just like to b- b- plug your social media handle, your uh, podcast page, the uh, uh, command yeah. this pod, where everyone can find you. Yeah, you can find us on Twitter at uh, at command underscore this, and then if you go on um, YouTube, you know uh, command this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we're on all social media platforms, all the uh, major podcast platforms, and putting out content uh, twice a week. Getting a little bit away from some some commander sports stuff, veering off to a little bit, you know, top five, f- some fun stuff for the off season. Just trying to keep it fresh and lively, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of kind of yeah. move the chains a little bit in the, in this slow time. So, Good. but yeah, yeah we're yeah. out there everywhere, man. Come find us. Hey, Steve, real Hell quick yeah. before we get out of here, uh, who stood out to you the most from OTAs? The most, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Jahan. Because honestly, I, I did not like the pick. I'm not be fully honest. I didn't like the pick of Jahan. It's Dawson. okay to be a lot of people didn't. Cool. Now yeah. to see what he's done, you know, because I was questioning, you don't pick a wide receiver two or three in the first round. So that's, right, therefore, right. he had to be the new wide receiver. But I've been totally impressed with the kid, the attitude, the way he's performed. So he's he's my he's my best performer so far. Yeah. And it seems like uh, everybody has been so far. That's I'm so excited for this now. It's such a, it's just a weird comment to ask a grown man this, but who's your favorite player right now? <laughs> there you go. There, there, I, there I like that shirt, Steve. I might right need there. to copy one of those. Right dude. there. You, no you said, what kind of car do I drive? Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that was so fun. When we if interviewed you, if them. You guys, if you guys yeah. saw our draft night live stream. It was we were, so funny. We were talking to Logan Thomas. We were interviewing Logan, and we were talking about golfing because Kendall Fuller had said he golfed in the offseason. So I was asking Logan, yep. who's the better golfer between him and Kendall? And he said, well, at the moment, Kendall is. Uh, but I said, all right, well, what are you driving? Like, as and in, then he goes, you're driving on, like, obviously on the course. You, you're driving. What kind of car do I drive? <laughs> and we were like, no. What kind of car do I drive? Yeah. With, with that Weird big, flex. raspy, low voice yeah, he yeah, has. Yeah, yeah, we're, like, we're talking about golf. What made you think? Dude. Like, you just wanted to show off your car. I Dude, get it. It, it right. took me, it, look, everything in my past power not to laugh like right there just because it was so funny like the comedic timing of it and i just yeah. knew reed was sitting there like mm, like just wanting to laugh about it but steve i can't thank you enough for joining us brother uh we will be back on monday hopefully you guys have a great weekend be safe happy father's day to all you guys out there all the yep. single mothers happy father's day to you as well i know it's hard to be able to do that but happy father's day everybody enjoy your weekend i'm kyle paul and i'm old dad Washington I guess football. I'm Steve. Yeah, I was waiting for it. I wasn't sure. All right, everybody, we'll see you on Monday. Washington football. Woo! Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way, you get notified when anything new is uploaded to the channel. Also, we just launched theburgundyzone.com. You can go there and find all of our latest news, articles, and the latest episodes that are uploaded. Again, we also have the Discord chat server where all of our VIP folks are in, like Andy Burroughs, Scott Hartley, Sergio Martin is in there as well. 
don't miss out on the Discord chat server. Go and check that out. Until next time, everybody, watching the football. Woo!